At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we're welcoming one of our facilitators on the show, and this is Shannon Lee Wayland, and she is a hypno-breathwork facilitator. Uh, She does hypno-breathwork with us, as well as a whole bunch of different other kind of classes and workshops and events. But we're going to be talking today about the importance of regulating your nervous system, especially in regards to breath, and how that you can use that to activate your flow state. And that can really help with creative self-expression and create and accessing creativity. So Shannon, thank you for joining today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I know this has been like, I think three attempts in the making. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. A couple of reschedules, but we got here. That's all yeah. that matters. <laughs> so, um, I always like to start out with, you know, I find it, I think the viewers find it interesting too, is to mm-hmm. understand like what started your path down this alternative healing, spiritual you know, processes, you know? Yeah. Um, for me, I just felt like there was something more that I wasn't experiencing that I've seen other people experience or talk about that. I was like, if that's possible, I want in on it. Like if I can feel more joy, more freedom in my life and not feel sad and like feeling like I'm not in control of things, then how do I shift out of that and into this higher way of being? Okay, so you're you're hearing people talk about that there's these tools or there's ways that they access and they have this ability to shift their state, you know, feel better, let go of things easier. And then, mm-hmm. so I mean, was this, did you end up in a breathwork class one day or like, what, what, what was that journey, you know, yeah. because a journey from kind of just openness and hearing what other people are doing to you being a facilitator, mm-hmm. you know, where's that leap? <laughs> yeah. So that was the interesting part. So in hypno breath work, we're really big on connecting to your intuition and listening to whatever your intuitive action is that you are, that you get in a session. Mm-hmm. And so I started jumping into community sessions throughout the week with different coaches that were certified in hypno breath work. And we'd come out and like the community would be talking about all these insights they got and all this stuff that was like coming through in the sessions. And I wasn't getting all those clear insights. I felt good. I was like, I'm relaxed. I maybe process some emotions, but I didn't get like a clear insight of like, take this step towards like your future. And somebody was like, just stick with it. Like you're just getting the emotions out. You're getting like all of the stuff that's in your body out still. And the insights can come through. They're clearer once you kind of clear all that out because it's all stacked up. I'm like, okay, great. Then it was like, All I could hear was, you have to do hypno breath work, hypno breath work, hypno breath work. I'm like, what is this about? Like, I'm doing the weekly calls. Like, I'm doing, like, what more am I supposed to do? And then I jump on Instagram and I see that there's another certification. And I was like, is that why this won't stop going on? Like, so loud in my head of, like, this is the path you're supposed to go down. And I was like, okay. So I jumped on a call with the woman who created the modality. And she was like, I think you'd be a great facilitator for this. And I got into the certification and I'm obsessed. Like it it was the best decision I've ever made in my life. That's amazing. So Mm -hmm. it, it, at very first, your first introduction though to it was your first introduction to breath work, hypno breath work or Mm -hmm. what? Okay. So, 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 well, I did do breath work a few times before I had done hypno breath work. So I had done one session at some type of healing event back like in 2019. Okay. It was like a sound bath with breath work and cacao. And I got so locked up. Have you you've done breath work yeah, where you yeah. get like stuck? So it's very common that your hands will get stuck or get tetany. It's um, energy that's stuck in the body. Mm-hmm. I had it like in my entire body. I didn't know we were supposed to like move to shake it out. I'm just like laying on the floor in this like intense and, and, and like, I'm just like literally it. my chest and everything starts cramping. And I was like, that was really cool, but so intense. I don't know if I can do that. And I also had this knowing eventually I'm going to have to do breath work. And I was just kind of avoiding it because because of that, it was so intense. Yeah. So then I was in a training to become a coach where I met Francesca who created hypno breath work and mm-hmm. I had a breath work session with her and I started following her journey and seeing what the results that she was getting with hypno breath work and the results, like the impact she was making with other people in the community. And that's when I was like, I think that's the missing piece for what I'm 
struggling to shift in my life is that we have a wiring. It's not, yeah. it's not my fault. Yeah. It's not like I'm choosing to just cycle through the, these behaviors and experiences in my life. Like we do have choice, but some of it we self-sabotage. And to hear that you can like release that and reprogram it in a session, I was like, okay, I need to go deeper with this. And yeah. so that's where I was like, all right, let me jump on these and see what's possible for me here. If I can let go of some of the things that I'm seeing as patterns that I don't want to continue. Yeah. Yeah. And for those that are, are listening, you know, some, some people might be even, you know, new to what breath work is. I mean, we've covered it a little bit in some of our podcasts and there might be people that are drawn to this because maybe they know regular breath work, but they don't know hypno breath work. Mm -hmm. But I'd like you to take a few minutes and in your own words, like explain to people, what is this thing breath work? And then maybe a little bit about, you know, uh, for people that haven't tried it, this whole like tetany that happens mm -hmm. in the hands and, you know, just so people are, you know, up to that. And then what is different about hypno breath work versus regular breath work? Okay. So yeah. I'm giving you like three questions. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Starting with what is breath work? So breath work is any form of conscious breathing. And there's a bunch of different ways. If you've mm -hmm. heard of breath work, you know, there's different techniques. I mean, you can do box breathing, you can do conscious connected breathing. We do uh, the two part inhale through the nose, one part exhale through the mouth. So it's mm -hmm. conscious connected pattern for it's circular breathing okay. um, and hypno breath work. Um, you can do in and out through your mouth to do a holotropic breath pattern. And really that's where you get connected to your intuition and, and consciousness is because that's the bridge. Our, our breath is the bridge between the conscious and the unconscious. Mm -hmm. It also is the one part of our autonomic nervous system that we have control over mm -hmm. and unconscious control over. So we breathe without thinking about it, but we can also control it. So yeah. when we slow our breathing down, if our heart's racing, our heart will start to slow down. That's part of the autonomic nervous system that like, if you go into a situation that has previously made you nervous or was unsafe, and you go into something similar, you might feel you start to get tense and your body reacts because your body is holding on to that memory to protect you, to keep you safe. Yeah. But when you put that into a situation where you're like in a relationship with somebody and they say or do something that is repeating a past experience and your response is not in alignment with what happened, it's kind of like, what's going on here? Yeah. Because you're responding. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm staying on track here with the three no, questions. Good. I'm going on a little tangent. Um, that's kind of how I talk. So, um... Yeah, so when you're able to rewire that through the breath and release those energetic patterns, your system won't automatically respond in that way and you can stay a little bit more grounded and present or go, oh, that's interesting. I feel a little bit off because it's not so reactive. Yeah. So it starts to clear out the energetic patterns, the unprocessed emotions so that you can actually stay in your body. And then you asked me what was breath work. <laughs> what was the next question? Hi. <laughs> uh if you want to explain, you know, so you're talking a little bit about the energetic movements yeah. and the ability to move energy within your body. And so, I mean, that kind of comes into what this tetany experience is. And so, yeah. you know, how would you describe that? And, you know, why do so many people have that as an experience when they are doing something that they do every day throughout mm -hmm. the day, but as they get they allow themselves to have that conscious control over their breath and they do so with intention and a little yeah. bit breathing in a little bit more, why it causes such a, a physical reaction to their body. Yeah, because you're re-oxygenating the body and if there is stored energy that's ready to be released and moved, it's just going to start to gather in those areas. And it can be that it's linked to the parts of the body that are trapped. Some people might get it in their mouth, which it's like, you need to speak up, you need to speak your truth to somebody maybe you've been holding back. So it just depends. But the most common place is in the hands and it is really just that trapped energy in our hands. You know, we have energy through them. So it's yeah. a way for them to release. And so through hypno breath work, we do cue to shake out a lot so that you're moving that energy and it's not just staying stuck in the body like that. Yeah, I think for anybody that hasn't or that is maybe a little skeptical on energy or, you know, hasn't had maybe such a profound experience with maybe a healer or energy or fe feeling that right, you know, most people they'll have an experience where they say, okay, they can walk in a room and it feels bad or it feels good or, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things. But I think it's definitely something for people to try and to have an experience because when doing it, I don't really, you know, as long as you're doing it and you're really putting that effort in, and sometimes it doesn't work for the first couple you know songs or the first few minutes but like when you get into that you know people have these reactions mm -hmm. and you feel your physical energy in a way that is so profound you know and um you know it has this ability to open up all your channels in your body right yep. you know and uh 
also has the ability to release and synthesize DMT that's inside of you, right? You know, and so you, some people feel like they're they're having a an acid or a, yes. a mushroom trip, you yes. know? And it's like, all I did was breathe. Why am I tripping? <laughs> yes, I have clients who come out and they're like, that's what it feels like. It feels like I've just taken acid. It feels like I just had a... Um, psychedelic experience and a healing and I'm like yeah that's the power of our breath it's, it's yeah it's trippy but it's really it's really powerful it's a really powerful practice no and I think it's super powerful breath work is super powerful to move energy to move stagnant energy to reactivate to the, the heal or heal that those wounds or traumas that are stored in the body I mean another thing for people that are listening that if you haven't had breath work before if you've ever gotten in a massage and they press in a mm. certain way and you have this physical release or you feel like you want to cry or something like that and it's not crying because it's painful it's not crying because it's discomfort but it's literally something different and it's like then you get flooded with a, a memory mm -hmm. um that stored energy and that's that stored emotion or that stored trauma that's in your system uh that comes out right and so I think more people have had these experiences without ha allowing themselves to have the words for it. Now, what mm -hmm. I like is in this open space of, of breath work, you know, and I feel like it kind of gets you to that core of being super present and super in the moment and clearing the energy is that to incorporate reprogramming, mm -hmm. right? And so explain a little bit about what hypno breath work is and why it's a little different than just normal breath work. And even though normal breath work is good, this is, this is a little different. Yeah. So we've combined hypnosis with breathwork and visioning. So what the founder who created hypno breathwork discovered was that it took anywhere from one to two hours for your brain waves to slow down into that hypnotic state in hypnosis. But when she tested her brain waves when she was doing breathwork, they dropped down in two minutes. Mm. So she goes, what happens if we put them together to see if this can be a more streamlined and impactful practice? if you combine them and it, and it truly was. So to music, to kind of in, incorporate the emotion, and then you're gonna be breathing through that, drop down to those brainwave states, and then we start to bring up the hypnotic cues, which are just anything that is going to activate your subconscious. Mm -hmm. So hypnosis is actually all self-hypnosis. If you don't wanna be hypnotized, you are in control of that. So it's not like what people think about hypnosis or what we were taught as kids. It really is like we go in and out of it all day. It's just into that state where you're kind of dropping in. It's like right when you get into flow state. So all you do is focus on your breath. We'll give you the cues. You let your subconscious show you allowing any emotions or memories just to come up and just to feel your way through it. Once you can feel it and release it, use the breath, just keep breathing through it. That's how you start to reset your nervous system around that type of experience or understanding that limiting belief that has been a driving force in your life that you didn't even maybe even know was something that you believed about yourself or like yeah took it on as part of your identity which can be hard to let go of so it, it can be very emotional and you want to let go through your body and all that so that's kind of the process there then once we release it we start to call them the visioning so it's like if you've released uh, a limiting belief that maybe you're not good enough we start to reprogram into your, your worth and seeing your higher self and seeing you uh, knowing like where you know you're meant to be, what, you make, what you're meant to do here, and fulfilling your purpose. So bringing that visioning, kind of like Dr. Joe Dispenza work and, mm -hmm. and getting it in the brain, because when you visualize, your mind does not know the difference between reality and visualization. So you start to attune your nervous system into that space, and then that's the energy you're taking with you. So you start to manifest things differently in your life. Yeah. Then it act, action, uh, the action step, asking for the intuitive action step from that space. What is your intuition telling you is the next step towards that vision for yourself? And then you want to take that action step, which starts to rewire again your system, because even if it scares you to take that risk, to make that bold ask or do whatever mm -hmm. it is that you might be, want to put off, take immediate action. It's like everything starts to unfold a lot faster when you follow that insight and then yeah. and then do it. Absolutely. So, you know, for just summarize, you know, for people that really it's kind of like the supercharged session, right? You're 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 getting insight nice. like you're accessing your own intuition, like you're getting a reading, but from your higher self. You're clearing and releasing stuck energy. You're reactivating your own energetic process in your body. Maybe you go on a trip, <laughs> but then mm -hmm. then it's looking at and it's reprogramming and shifting and allowing yourself uh, what i like about this is uh, it's 
you're bringing up experiences and having them reprocess it in a different state, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's a big thing on like state dependent learning, state dependent recall in this programming. So like, you know, you're in such a more profound, relaxed, euphoric state, and then you're going and re-triggering a memory and you're kind of uh, dissolving the energetic charge for it, right? Yeah. And then and then the metaphors and the suggestions and the ability to help people visualize, it's, it's so great. I mean, like I've been doing, I'm the hypnotherapist for almost 20 20 years so mm -hmm. like you know like but it, the power of breath work when I first got introduced breath work I it was I never did it before uh, we had liberate Hollywood and so maybe that's like six years now or whatnot and we had a Jay Bradley was our breath or he would do breath work every Saturday and sometimes on other days and I, I went into it and I was like what is this yeah. you know thing like and it's like you know for somebody that has had like healing centers for like a decade <laughs> I was like why have I not done this yet first off mm -hmm. second off like it's it was so profound but I always thought about you know and he would do a little bit he he also did hypnotherapy and he would do a little bit um of this reprogramming, this a visualization at the end. And I was like, man, genius. I didn't even know that there was like a modality that was created, but I was like, so you're in such a receptive space. You've just cleared. You're in the now. You're the energy is so built up. And I believe that energy is power of manifestation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so if you are supercharged, like boom, you're vibrating uh -huh. <laughs> and you have a clear picture and insight in what you want, or you have this ability to like, think of that. I feel like that's like a hundred times more powerful than if you do that in like, I don't know, a regular meditation or you're doing it in a journey, a journaling exercise because yeah. you just don't have that energy. You have to try it to experience it. Yeah. The energy that flows through that causes your fingers to go like this and you feel your body vibrate. Yeah. It's like, okay, something's happening here. <laughs> and if I direct this powerful like charge towards what I want, you know, it only makes sense that it would happen 10 times faster, right? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's it's so good, you know, and the and the fact and I know that sometimes you you gear some of the sessions or the classes around different topics, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can set that intention for people. I mean, I know you're yeah. doing like for for prosperity and abundance and things mm -hmm. like that, and you know now you're looking at doing some for creativity and activating creativity. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, I guess that gets me into uh, regulating the nervous system, which is kind of the, the topic for today, I mean, yeah. all of it, right? You know, so uh, where's the power of regulating the nervous? system right people are so freaking stressed out lately i yep. mean it's like I, I i don't even know i feel i mean this is just my estimate but i feel like it's up like thousands of percent especially oh, yeah. since covid i mean before that i was already noticing like in private practice and things like that anxiety and this ability that nobody was present everybody's yeah. like overthinking about the future overthinking about the past everybody's mm -hmm. like stressed out there's expectations this fear of judgment is out of control yeah. and you know like i don't know if it correlates with social media or maybe just more population or just all of the e emfs and like all this stuff i'm sure it's a combination of all but you have that and then you throw people into a panic state and fear state for two and a half years and lock <laughs> yeah. them indoors. Yeah. And, and now what, it, you know, are people experiencing, you know, it, it, it is mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. Their yeah. nervous system's out of control. Yep. It's, and so what are the harmful effects of that? Yeah. Cause it stacks. So the harmful effects of that, I mean, that will cause disease that mm -hmm. causes, and if you are holding on to anger, fear, anxiety, that manifests out as disease. Yeah, you'll start to notice in the parts of your body. If you look at like um, Louise Hay book, what how is it called? Um, you can heal your life. Thank you. <laughs> like every piece of information is leaving my brain. Um, you can heal your life. If you start to notice where you have aches and pains or things going on in your body, they correlate to something that probably has happened in your life. If you're holding on to grief, if you lost somebody that you love and you haven't really processed that, there's a part of the body that will carry that. It's typically going to be in your gut. So you want to be able to feel that feeling and it's a safe space to feel it like going mm -hmm. into breath work. So, um, so yeah, it's, it, it can really just cause a lot of harm in your body into manifesting into disease. I mean, it'll affect your relationships because you're going to be kind of a more edgy person. Yes. You might not be as compassionate or patient with the people around you. So that can also start to erode in, in the body and just age you. It, it, just yeah. in general, you know, it just starts to weigh you down. You enjoying this so far? 
Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. Aging, stress, more acidic, uh, acidity in the mm -hmm. body, pH levels out of control, cancer, disease, ailments, relationship problems, depression, oh, lethargic. Look, I mean, like you name it. Anything yeah. that's bad news bear, that that's that's it. Yeah, and you that's know? what you see going on around everybody. And that's what you see. You know, declining. you you have this declining health. You know, and then people are doing what they can to try to find energy because if the, you're constantly in fight or flight, what are you going to do? You know, you're burning through all of your energy reserves. Fight yeah. or flight is supposed to be biologically for the rare occurrences where, you know, we're getting chased by a saber toothed tiger. Yeah. Okay. Ah! And then we go and the adrenaline kicks in and we have the superpower charge. But you're, if you're tapping from your reserve every day, all day, you know, yeah. Well, what the heck, right? You or know, if you're so, getting all the caffeine, and then you're gonna take all the well, sleeping yeah, that, pills, that, that, and then you start to saying. completely dysregulate. Like Th that's the next step. Yeah. Everybody's caffeinated. Everybody's this, and then also besides caffeinated, then you see people also grab for foods that are yeah. energy quick rapid response so yeah. that, but those tend to be carbohydrates sugars donuts cakes cookies you know any of these responses and they mm -hmm. don't even know why they're being drawn to it but they're being drawn to it because they have no freaking energy and and i i think it has an emotional connection to it as well yeah there's always a physical or emotional connection to that type of behavior yeah Hi. for sure yeah and and you know so like at my experience i mean one one time i uh I mean, I used to do it like breath work, like weekly. And then, then during the pandemic, I decided to go in and I was mm. like every day for like three months. And nice. man, you know, it, it was really something that put me at peace. I yes. felt present. I felt like I could like look around and just like take in nature. And, you know, I, I sometimes, and I mean, maybe I'm at the space. I was actually just thinking, I was like, I need to get back into a regular breath work, like routine. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I the inability, if you if you ever enter into a state of meditation or any type of this like state where you go into relaxation, go to sound bath, go to these things, wherever you are, you know, that, that, that you've had this experience, where afterwards you feel like the world is quiet, <laughs> that isn't the world, that's you. <laughs> yes. And if you don't feel like that normally, that probably means that you have a dysregulated system, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the benefit of doing this. You know, how, yeah. how regular would you recommend people do a practice like this? Like work with you. To work with, um, okay, so I would well, say- Well, there's two things, yeah, because you also do coaching and stuff, but yeah. Yeah, let's, let's get... I was gonna say, if you're gonna do like working with a coach one-on-one, -on -one, weekly sessions are great. So you're diving into whatever is coming up uh, intuitively from, you know, it's peeling, I call it peeling back the layers, peeling yeah. the onion. So you just follow that um, week by week. And then I would also love with people like to set a goal. What is it that you want? Mm -hmm. By the end of this, what's the purpose of doing that? So it's towards that. But a lot of times we take a route that might not seem like the most uh, direct route because we're going to go into your childhood. So, yeah. <laughs> so giving people time to kind of like process and integrate is, a, you know, by week by week. But we do have um, an app also called Mastery that has 22 record, 22 minute recorded sessions. And that is a daily practice because that's like a you can get into flow state. You can find out, OK, what is it that I want to focus on today? It's not going to go as deep into like your emotions because you're on your own. Yeah. So but it is a good practice to do every day just to get centered and focused and to connect into yourself. So nice. that's so kind there, of there's it. 21 different recordings on there. There's a there's more than 21. There's a bunch of different coaches on there. There's different topics. So it's yeah, 22 minute streamlined oh, practice. 22 minutes. Okay. Oh, 22 minutes. Yeah. So we have 22 minute and eight minute sessions that you can drop into at any point in time, oh, that's which is awesome. awesome. Yeah. So it's like I said, it's not going to go as deep into your emotional state because we don't want to do that to people and then not have anybody there to be with them to integrate but it is a good daily space oh, to just that's check so in, great you know? and, and where's the app on there or what's the app again it's mastery so it's m-a-s-t-r-y okay mastery yeah mastery and then you're app. on there and you have a few on there mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah i'm on there and then i have a creativity course that's a 15-week course to help oh, get let's hear about it because we're just so we're talking yeah. about now using the the uh the the ability to regulate your nervous system and get into that flow state. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about why it's important for flow state, and then you've linked that to the ability to access somebody's creativity. Yeah, so, and then yeah. 
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, so 15 weeks of my creativity course, it's hypno breath work based and it's really to get you out of your ego and like really align to your soul and what your soul wants to create. Um, I think we've heard time and time again, artists who like tried to make what they thought people would like. And then finally, when they gave that up and just created for themselves, that's when things kind of took off. So it's that kind of mindset around it. So being able to get into flow state where you're not having all that mental chatter and all that fear and doubt creep in of like, is this good enough? Are people going to like it? And you're just like focused on what you're doing and nothing. Yeah. It's like when time and space don't exist. So one of my clients who said it used to take weeks or months to write a song, wrote a song in two to three hours after working together. Yeah. So it just clears the channel for what wants to come through. Um, so that's the creativity course. Um, and now, I, sorry, I forgot the question. No, it's, it's all good. We're just going, going and flowing, right? Going and flowing. We're yeah. in our flow state. I'm in my right flow now. state where I can't then remember where, yeah. I'm, where I'm going. I'm very present. No, but so talk to me a little bit about and share with uh, where at our listeners, what is a flow state? Flow state. So flow state is where that time and space don't, seem to exist and you're just hyper focused on what you're doing if you've ever experienced that you might look up and think it was 10 minutes that passed and it's been like three hours so you've just been like in that flow so being able to access that on demand is a superpower because you can sit down and get into your work and complete what might take you a day and an hour or two yeah and, and it's like, so important there's been so many different psychological studies on the uh, people that can access flow state on a regular basis how uh, happiness, fulfillment mm -hmm. in life, all of those the correlations are very, you know, and then there's there's certain jobs that put people into flow state, you know, mm -hmm. and that those jobs have higher correlation of life satisfaction and happiness because like yeah. people like kind of zone out while they're doing these repetitive things that might be seeming like, you know, kind of something that you wouldn't think was fulfilling, but they're super happy because they access the state. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's you're in that zone. And I think it's when that voice is not coming in and interrupting everything and you're not thinking about anything else because you're just right there. And it just it's the best. I love it. It's yeah. like addicting. <laughs> so you just get in and get to creating, get to doing the work. And it just makes all of that resistance disappear. So it, it again, it, it fills up the, the cup instead of feeling draining because yeah. it's the resistance that we were like chugging along, trying to get through things rather than just like going into that flow. Yeah. And, and to be able to do, you know, that's one of the things is like sometimes it takes so long to complete things. Mm -hmm. That's because we're half in, half out. Right. Yeah. You know, when we're really into something, it's easy. And one, it's also enjoyable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if you're thinking about, oh, the fight I got in with my partner last night when you're trying to get your work done. But if you can just kind of like let that go and then be able to be where you are instead of being over anywhere else. Yeah. Cause like you're, nothing is going to happen if you're like, you know, this is the time you have to work. Nothing's going to happen over there. Yeah. You know, but you'll be in a better state if you're just able to be where you are. Yeah. And you, you enjoy it more, but also you get more out of whatever you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this morning I was totally not in my flow state and I was in <laughs> yoga and I was dealing with the, so a situation that I was trying to figure out how to resolve in my mind. And, uh -huh. and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm just yeah. like blowing through yoga class, like, you know, no, not yeah. even present, yeah. you know, and it would normally I'm like, break a sweat. And I'm like this, I'm like, hard. I'm like, come on, I'm here to right. be here. Right? right. But when you're not, you know, that's the problem. And then when you're, when you pull up a, your computer and you're supposed to be checking your emails or doing other things, or you want to write that book or you want to write that song or you want to do the thing mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. And you're somewhere else. Yeah. It's going to take you 10 times longer right. to do quarter of the work. Yeah, totally. And so, I mean, it's important. Yeah. So this creativity course that you have, mm -hmm. is this really, is, is this jump starting? I mean, it's also helping people access creativity, but is yeah. it really like some of the principles and things that they can walk away with as being able to access this flow state? Accessing the flow state, but also accessing, like, like I said, like what their soul wants to create. It's, it's deeper levels of your creativity, maybe things that you haven't known how to express, how to show that really wants to come out of you out of that fear, that doubt, or like, that's not my lane or whatever the story is that we have about why we may not go the, go into that flow with our, some of our ideas. Um, so it's really just anchoring you into, again, your purpose of what are you here to create? Because we're all creators. Yeah. So it's really for anybody. I mean, I love working with artists and creatives in that space, but everything is creativity. 
Like uh, the world, see? the world is everything Amen has happened in someone's brain and been put out in here. So yeah, it's just anchoring into what are the things that are in the way from that just coming through. Yeah. So if you're, if you've been inspired or you're thinking like, Hey, this may be something for me. It's like, you know, you don't have to be what is classified as a creative career. Mm -hmm. You can, you can find that creativity in everything you do. You yeah. know, you just, just your way of looking at life. And having a creative self-expression, just getting up and going and exploring the world can be a creative process. Yeah, absolutely. And just doing what your heart is desiring and following that, it's a practice. Yeah. Because of like, I don't know, I have I doubt myself a lot. So I have to go through a lot of releasing doubt because I question, is this, am I good enough? And so that's a lot of my practice of like releasing of that and then taking the next step and being like, okay, so it's not unsafe to do that. It's yeah. not unsafe to, to take the next step in this direction. And so, yeah, I mean, if there's anybody out there that feels like they've wanted to be creative or did, don't think that they're good enough, like it's so subjective. And the whole, I think the more we just keep going with the things that we feel we're desiring to do, the more we create peace and harmony in the world because we're not like in resistance with ourselves of being tortured by this thing that we feel we don't understand why we want to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, so well said. And, you know, it's very, it's very normal. I mean, there's that whole, you know, phenomena of imposter syndrome, you mm -hmm. know, people, you know, until you get to that point of, of really trusting there is that, you know, we do that. We look at, we look at where we're at, we think about this, and there's always a strive to growth, right? So then mm -hmm. we're like, okay, well, I'm not where, you know, I could be better, I could be this, well, it's all great, but you could be amazing right now too, right? You yeah. know, and so trusting in that. And the other thing that I wanted to touch on before we wrap up today is this ability of this direct access to maybe some higher insight, mm. right? Because I think a lot of people, um, I've been finding a lot more now than ever before is there's this trend or this movement or this just collective consciousness of this transition. And a lot of people are feeling lost, right? You have literally what's going on and, you know, you could like look in the jobs report and you can say, okay, 25% of people are quitting their jobs, mm -hmm. right? You know, like, and these are, these are like statistics that are out there, right? You know, people are quitting their jobs. People are leaving their careers. People are shifting what they do, yeah. you know, and there's been this massive, you know, the pandemic hit a pause on everybody, regardless of where you're at on it, regardless of what your beliefs are, you know, one way or another, you know, there was a pause for a moment of at least a few months that we were kind of all locked into doors, you know, mm -hmm. where we took two weeks off and none of this, it's been nothing like that has ever happened. Mm -hmm. Nobody was freaking working. Everybody was furloughed or their jobs or their businesses or whatever were closed. And in that pause state, there was a reflection. And then through, you know, two years of having upheaval in life, and there was a, and, and now even more upheaval with the constant changing of the economy and the threats of more world wars and all of this other stuff and gas and whatever the case may be, you have people constantly assessing their value system, right? Yeah. But what I hear more and more is people know they don't like where they're at, but they have no idea where to go. Yes. So yes. I, I think that to touch on that a little bit about this ability to listen and the guidance that comes through, because yeah. I think that that's so profound in today's time when people need those answers. Especially if you've been somebody who has been told what to do a lot. If you followed what someone is, is telling you of where to go with your life and how to, how to do this or that. Um, I think it becomes very confusing to start to listen to yourself because other people are going to tell you what their projection is for you. Um, I had a lot of that in my life where people were telling me and I'm like, I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to do anything you're telling me to do. And, but I doubt it. Like I said, I doubted myself. So then starting to listen to what my voice was saying, I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. I don't understand it. Why would I do that? But like I said, when we follow our desires, it starts to unfold the way in a way that we can't even imagine. But I do understand like it, it's that challenge, like you're saying, get, getting connected to that. It's, yeah. it's clearing out all of that stuff that's stacked up. It's like our subconscious mind is created between zero and seven, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's stuff that's going on in there that you have about yourself that you believe that is just not 
a, tr- a universal truth. It's just yeah. what you believe about yourself or the way you see the world. That was a program that was just imprinted into you yeah. at the beginning of your life. And being able to start to witness those things and observe the things rather than be w- within them and step away from that and really clear out all the mental chatter, clear out all the noise and really listen. Yeah. What is it that my heart wants? Yeah. And I, I don't blame a lot of people for not wanting to go into work and into jobs where they're not treated with respect, where they're not, they're like, they're, I, I will not tolerate disrespect somewhere. Like, I don't, I would rather not have a job. Yeah. And I, so I understand why people are doing that. Um, and realizing, you know, that there are so many opportunities available with the way that, you know, the internet has worked out that you can go work from anywhere. So seeing other people are just going out and traveling around and doing whatever they want to do. And it's kind of like, well, why am I stuck here in a cubicle getting yelled at over stuff that's not even my fault? I don't blame people for not wanting to do that anymore. So taking a a moment to sit, you know, giving that pause that we had and people going, the heck, if it can all be taken away like that, what am I really doing? And it's kind of like this big wake up. Absolutely. So what I'm hearing is that, you know, part of the process is getting through some of the inherent programming of of listening to others or listening to society and that. Yeah. And so it's like clearing some of that away, shifting some of these filters that might have been inherent since you were like five. Right. You know, and and then it's through that clearing process, right? And then it goes back to what you were saying in the very beginning when you were giving your like story of what was going on with you mm-hmm. and you weren't getting these profound insights and these different things like other people. And, you know, they will say, well, you're just processing still, yep. right? So there, this is this ability of that releasing and letting go and re, re kind of programming. Mm-hmm. And then you can get to the place of listening, right? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. But it's like clearing away. It's like you got to take out all the crap out of the closet before you can start organizing it. Mm-hmm. Right? If you just try to start organizing with everything stuffed in, do you really get a chance to organize it? Or are you just kind of like, you know, doing, you know, nasty girl clean, right? You yeah. know, yeah. like <laughs> it, 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 if so, so you got to take it all That's out. So yeah. <laughs> And then you can say, okay, is this what I really want? Is this this? I like, I finally faced it all. I look through those drawers or those cabinets and pull everything out, you know, and then you can like kind of restore yeah. and you can really get a clear picture. Yeah. You get into alignment with yourself. Yeah. It's, and it's the most beautiful thing. Cause you're like, I don't need other people's approval of what it is. I know who I am and what I want. And I know what that looks like now. Huh. But if you were told go to school, get a job. Yeah. take care of your family and do all these things. And it was like, you have to go be a doctor to make good money so that you can take care of your family. And then you hate being a doctor. I don't want a doctor that hates being a doctor to yeah. be my doctor. No, you know, but it's, it's again, it's the, like you said, societal programming that just comes down the line and then peeling back again, those layers. So all in the process. I love it. So yeah. speaking of the process, where can people find you? Um, on Instagram, I'm Shannon Lee Whalen. I'm also on TikTok, Shannon Lee Whalen underscore coach. Okay. So you can find me on those two platforms. You can find me on Mastery. And yeah, those and, are and here. Places. And here every Thursday at 2 p.m. I'm here doing Hypno Breathwork. So. Love it, yeah. love it, love it. Well, thank you so thank much you. for this joining. I really hope that if uh, you're inspired that... You know, if you're here and you're close and you're in L.A., come down, try a class, see what it's like, you know, have that experience. You know, if you're you're away, you know, all of the, the Internet and the new ability and this app that you can access and get access to things no matter where you are in the world, um, you know, take advantage of it. You know, that's one of the best things that has come out of all of this is this ability that we can reach people in more ways and in more yeah. more areas. And so that there isn't this location based access yeah. anymore. Right? Yeah, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. It's really cool to like do sessions with people that are all over the world yeah. and like everybody comes together and they're breathing together. Like that's just such a experience and to do that in community is so fun so if you're interested reach out we have lots of stuff going on and opportunities to breathe together oh love it love it love it 
thank you so much and please uh, like comment subscribe you know all the things that we tell you to do you know but they do make a difference and even though if it seems like it's uh, repetitive please do it you know a couple comments or two seconds of your time may help this spread to more people to have awareness to the tools or resources that they need to make changes in their life if you're listening to this on one of the audio platforms uh ask you to go check out the YouTube. Well, it's still kind of jumping up there and not as popular, And but we have the ability to see us. And the cool thing about YouTube that's not on the audio platforms is that we do a few different shorter uh, uh, clips of some of the most juiciest parts of this conversation. So go find them there, share with your friends. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.